on that uh, last run there uh, of the straight eight, uh, we uh, broke a connecting rod or something. It's uh, number five cylinder there. My son put his hand over it and he didn't feel exhaust coming out. But uh, the muffler was hot, so it had been running previously to that. But then he noticed noticed a crack down here in the paint. So I think we broke a connecting rod. Over to this side, show you. There's there's no no mark there like there normally would be. But I will disassemble the engine and show you the results. Well, didn't break the connecting rod, but we got a whole bunch of oil and uh, what looks like uh, aluminum shavings. So we'll have to uh, see what we got going on here with that cylinder. Have to tear down and find out what's going on, but at least it's not a not a connecting rod. Now well, getting ready to uh, tear cylinder number five from the straight eight down here. The uh, first thing I noticed was that uh, the crankshaft turns, but the camshaft doesn't. So we'll find out soon uh, what's causing that. Well, that answers that question, why the camshaft wouldn't drive, because the uh, crankshaft gear uh, broke apart and was in the bottom of the crankcase getting flung around. You can see it had a talk with the connecting rod there, and the camshaft doesn't want to turn very well. It's got some dings in it. It uh, seems that these uh, uh, non-integral... Uh, crankshaft gears don't like use in my Franken Briggs engines. I uh, broke one pieces on the 327 there, the three cylinder uh, like radial stacker engine too. Whereas uh, old crankshafts with the uh, integral gear, I've never had any problem with them. But I wasn't really expecting this. This particular engine was used on the uh, four cylinder uh, as well as the six and now the 8, so it has seen a fair amount of use but uh, certainly wasn't expecting it to uh, break the crankshaft uh, gear there it's probably uh, vibration harmonics, uh, something like that but at least it didn't come out the side of the block, that was a good thing now I can see some damage here on the intake camshaft load there uh, gouge on the side here it also wore off the top of the lobe. I'm assuming the counterweight on the crankshaft did that. Gouges there in the middle and uh, some damage on the exhaust lobe there, but nothing like the intake. But uh, other than that, you know, I can probably fix that on that camshaft. But but uh, connecting rod there, it uh, did some damage to it too. See uh, there, the lock tab and the side there gouged her up good. So, I may be able to reuse it, not sure, but um, at least I don't think it damaged the block other than that little thing we noticed on the paint there, but a uh, little JB weld could cure a tiny hole, but anyway, so the crankshaft's stiff too, so uh, I think the connecting rod got, uh, got tightened up a bit there uh, from all that pounding. Uh, it made this, you know, damage caused from uh, the gear let go and then the engine kept running on seven cylinders, uh, powering it. So uh, we didn't run along, it was maybe 15-20 uh, seconds or something, but my son uh, noticed the noise and then that's why on the video he puts his hand over the exhaust there to try to find out what was uh, going on and he said there wasn't any exhaust coming out of that cylinder. So it turns out the way it stopped, uh, both valves were open and the piston was still going up and down, but there was all kinds of shavings in the oil and that, so I was grinding a little bit of aluminum up while it was spinning over there. So, anyways, looks like uh, I can salvage this uh, this cylinder here at least, so not the end of the world or anything, so my next plan is to build a uh, seven-cylinder engine, so I probably won't be using uh, this particular engine anyways, so so we can 
Get on with another project here.